In this video, we're painting polar bears and I thought it was poignant that the polar bears are separated by the ice melting with everything that's going on with global warming. If you want to paint alongside me, I've provided everything below the photograph and the drawing as well. You'll have to excuse that the video quality isn't great because it's recorded on Zoom whilst I was running a class. But I did think it was worth sharing, so enjoy. Any questions? Ask in the comments. If you like, like and subscribe. Let's get to it. This is a 16 by 12 canvas or 30 by 40 centimeters. So I'm going to give it a quick squirt. I want to keep things wet. I'm going to mix some dark. I don't really want to put black directly onto this. So I'm going to just mix quite a bit of this darker blue. I'm going to start off and I'm going to put in some of these dark colours. As long as you're keeping it wet, it doesn't really matter what order we go in. Are you putting water in that as well? I've put a little bit. It's more what's just in the brush. I'm just going to put a little bit this side as well. You can have quite a lot of white in the centre. I'm going to try to be fairly careful about not getting this too dark straight away. You can see almost immediately that that's not quite the right colour. It does need a little bit more of the red in there. So I'm going to add some of this red. And I have wet my brush again just to keep it moving. This has got the red, the black and the blue at the top. This is the right colours, it's just getting them in the right order so that everything merges together. If you get the colours a bit wrong, it's not the end of the world, but you do need these darker areas around the sides. You do want to be adding that red in, although it might not be obvious. You can get your paint on in a sort of crisscrossy way as well like this but whatever you do in the end you want it to be flowing in the right direction you can go quite dark straight away it doesn't matter if it's not exactly like the picture either those white bits that come through naturally off the paper couldn't you leave some of those for the stars i, I know it sounds like you could you definitely can for a painting that is on paper but on canvas, I just think it looks a bit unfinished, to be honest. That's my opinion. And you might have a different opinion. We are going to add stars. I would get a good coverage on it. Okay. If you're placing colours, you can be placing colours like this. Yeah, that's placing colours. Yeah, we could, I could even have done it like this all the, all the way along, yeah. And then when we're blending, if you see the difference with how I use the brush, if you're placing colours, your brush is being used quite strongly and it's getting all of that paint out of the brush. Now, when you're blending, what you want to do is you still want to use the same brush, but you're using it in a very light way. And that's the thing that it's like a feather. What I'm doing now is just playing with those colours that we've got, which is the phthalo blue, the white and the lemon yellow. So that's our basic turquoise. But then I've just tried adding a few bits like adding the red. You need to add small amounts of it. I want it to have a harder brush now, like a bristle brush. I've picked up this new colour that we've mixed. I'm also going to pick up some of the white. It could be that we put a little bit of the white on first. This is just a dry brush. I want to blend in, but dry. You've got to be careful that the, you don't put too much paint on. You can yes. introduce this a little bit at a time. What I'm trying to do here is just blend in some of that colour. And then we'll pick up some of the even brighter colours in the middle. This isn't as yellow here, it's more bluey. So we've got to be careful that you pick up more of the blue colour here. We are going to have to play with the colours. Like at the edges, yeah. we're going to bring the blues in 
and then it goes brighter in the centre. And then we do want to blend at the edges. I'm dulling it back down again. And yes, it's yes. starting to look more right. And that's tone. So if you actually look at the tone there, then if you look at this, the tones aren't as different as it first appears. I've used a, a white trace down. You note, I haven't put in these lines at the top. They were just a guide for me. I think instinctually, it's naturally to think that that is almost as bright as some of, the, of these colours here, which is why I thought I would do this in black and white because each colour that you have has a different tonal value. The difficulty that you have, especially when you're working with newish colours, because we haven't really used these very synthetic bright colours before, not in this Aurora Borealis way, we've never done that before, is that you start to think that some colours are brighter than they are. And that's why sometimes it's worth photocopying in black and white and the other thing that happens is if something's just really not working sometimes it's because it merges it's because it's a similar value and often things do merge like here that white iceberg is actually merging with this and you want that to happen you hear people talk about lost and found and this is like this edge has got a really strong tonal contrast compared to this, which has almost lost the edge. When people talk about lost and found, here we found that edge again, it's really strong again. But here, this edge, it's exactly the same edge. This is darker here than the sea. Whereas here, it's lighter than the sea. And those are the sorts of things that you want to be getting right. Because if you can get those right, it's going to come together. When I talk about tonal value, I'm talking about whether something's dark or light. I can see, and I'm going to draw on this, I can see that there's a separation of a lighter colour. All of this here, that shape here, in fact, I'm just going to colour it in so that you can see what I mean. Can you see that shape there is all really light and there's also a really light value there and it's those sorts and there's a really light value here it's just on the edge but I can see that and these little nuances are really important so this is a, another layer. The blending it tends to either be very very soft or you can be rub rubbing it quite like that, so if, yeah, which is hard, that's the hard blend. Here I can see all the reds and purples and things coming through and I actually really like the painting when I'm looking at it directly. It's not blended enough yet, but that's okay because I would fiddle with it a lot more. But I do want to show you the, the next stage, which is the splatter, because I think that once you've actually got all of this blended and you're happy with your sky, then you can move on to splatter, but I wouldn't splatter with just white on its own. I would mix it in with some of the blues and, and reds. Cover over that bottom bit a little bit. Right, okay. So I don't know what this is going to turn out like, but I shall just... There we go. Oh, can you see? That's fantastic. <laughs> now, obviously the blend's not right yet. I'll show you what to do. I'm doing it too early. But you can see how once everything's blended and then you do this, it's going to work really nicely, isn't it? And then we're on to the painting underneath. I'm going to finish this sky with the similar techniques to what we've already done. And if you've gone wrong here where it's gone dry, don't worry, just go back over with okay. the colour the other way. All right. Yeah? Yeah, okay. And the stars will cover a whole host of things. So as long as you're happy with your background, that's not too bad, you know, because remember, we're going to immediately start putting colours and things, all sorts of things on here as well. I will go over it again, 
I'm reasonably happy with it, to be honest. It just needs, I just feel like I need a few more layers. Just get an idea of the colours for the bears. And then we'll start painting the snow and it'll be quite dramatically different. You don't want the polar bears to look so separate from the rest of the team. We'll start the yellow and the red. So we've got an orange. And then you put, now this is where with colour mixing, it gets confusing because people just put too much in here. Yeah? And you can put a tiny, tiny bit of the green. It's so strong, that green. See, that's still quite yellow. When you think about it, if something's quite yellow, now we're going to add a little bit of the, the red. See, it's very easy to overshoot. Tiny bit of green again. Right. This is a brown that's just made from these three colours. That is not the same colour as that, it's more greeny. So because it's more greeny, I'm going to put a tiny bit more of the phthalo green, but you have to be dead careful because, see that tiny, tiny bit, see how it can, it'll make it go really quite green. If you're not careful. And I'll just add a bit of water so you can. And that's about right, you know, that's not a bad colour. I think that we might be able to mix the, the bear's browns, but you find it's a little bit tricky. If we put the raw umber out, it's a ready-made again, but I'll just show you the, the colour of the raw umber. Notice I've used raw umber rather than burnt umber because I'm thinking it's more along the, the sort of greeny lines. So that's almost the colour straight away, you see. If I add some white on that, I'll show you. Yeah. It's um, not as rich, is it, as the other one? Well, it's good to mix your colours because if you mix your colours, you're mixing them with the colours that are in the rest of the painting. And so yeah, it will yeah. make a lot of sense because this isn't yeah. about necessarily exactly what's here it's also about making an, a painting that is cohesive and together you know if you have any brown that's mixed from the rest of it it should look right as long as you get the tone right i'm going to take it off the absolute white so i'm going to mix and let's see this is, so that has got loads of blue in <laughs> and you can't tell there we go that's better you're wanting to knock it off the white and in a turquoisey way really and you can also it's okay to leave touches of color coming through from underneath as well so you don't have to do a perfect job here what happens with snow is it reflects whatever's above it and this is what we're trying to do so i'm also going to think about obviously we've got the tone see that's better that's looking better see it's, can you see the difference between having it bright bright white it's great this you have to sort of not worry about it as much as what, what, what sort of brush are you using I'm actually using quite a big brush now if you're mixing different bits and, and pieces. I think you've got to not worry too much. You get some colour in and then you can start working on the tone afterwards. And there is quite a lot on the drawing of indication as to where the edges are and, and that sort of thing. So you can see, but I think that, see that colour is better than this colour because it's it's being dulled down now so I'm going to add in touches of white here as well so you're going to have to just don't worry too much about different colours going on because it's not all the same colour at all what I'm doing here now as well you've got to think about the big do you remember I bang on a lot about brush stroke direction so you need to think about the brush stroke direction and you need to start thinking about tone and shape the direction of the ice here is sloping and if you have a 
stroke that goes in that direction, it will definitely show the sloping down. So it will show the shape of this, but also whether it's the slope or not. And that's just from the brush stroke. So it's quite important to start picking up those sorts of things as well as the tone. If you see there, just by doing that movement makes a difference to how something is looking. And then we're going to have the, the, dark, the darker shadow here, which means that you'll see that it's 3D. So I'm gonna start working at the front. It's quite quick, the first layer, because we might put more layers on, but until you've got the rest of it in, it's really difficult to tell exactly where everything is and it will all come together. I think we're going to have to start going for, for a smaller brush. I've got some curved edges. They don't have to be curved. You could have a flat brush. Use your brushes you really like. This area here, I'm not as worried about. I'm just getting the shape right. Getting, getting a little bit of colour in there. And I probably won't work that, that much on this area at all because as long as I've got some different sort of indications, this isn't the focal point. So we're not going to worry too much about this area. There we go. So we'll do something like that. And then we're starting to get all of those brighter areas in. We can always go brighter or darker on top anyway, because the eye is broken up and therefore it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit rough, it really doesn't matter. This area here is quite interesting because if you look, it has got certain sides to it, which is what I was talking about that I really wanted to cover. So you've got a, a side that is being hit by the light, not sunlight, it's evening light, but it's definitely being hit by light. So yeah. you still want to represent that. And I'm just looking here. So we've got some brighter areas here. And this is an angle brush, but equally it could be, you could be using a, a brush like that. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. As long as you've got enough control over it to be able to just fill in the shapes really. I'm now going to go a little bit bluer here. Just because, can you see this blue here? If you look, just just have a look as as you get further back there's definitely blue going on you're getting the reflection of the araborealis aren't you through the snow yeah i'll show you on this look if you look here with the black and white you can see that there's darker areas of tone and yeah. this is what i'm trying to do now in the background and I know that I'm dotting about but I'm sort of not as well because I'm just doing the large patches of light white and then we're going to come to the water so I'm doing the ice now we're going to come to the water as well that's what I'm hoping to do today uh, there we go. I'm starting to think that I've done the bottom part too light. The photograph that I've got that I've printed is is almost the same colour as the sky, but on your image that's coming through here, Debbie, it's quite dark. The bottom. Yeah, I deliberately did the the bottom part quite dark with the idea that yeah, I would get a better contrast. These the contrast because mm. it's all about tone. This this front part is all about tone. Now it looks almost black in the bottom right corner. Is it really dark? Yeah, it's quite dark. Not perhaps not as dark as it is on the screen when I'm looking at the screen because I've added black in places. Can you see how that's a greeny blue? Some places there's a blue that's more like a purpley blue. Now where it's got this purple blue you want to be adding that red back in. That's where you think, oh gosh, I can't mix this colour out of these colours, but it's just because you're not thinking about adding the red. What I've done here, these colours that are in the water in the background are the phthalo blue and the red. So we're picking up on the purples from the sky that in the water in the back here. As we come forward, you can see there are some purples and some, it's the same colours. It's like the turquoises and the purples are still in that sky. I'm doing this background 
just to get the mountains in the background done. And I did this because I needed to see the colour comparisons and everything when I was just doing this background. So that's why I just did that little bit of water. Again, we're going, if you look at brush stroke wise, you wanted to show the fact that it is a mountain. I'm going to add some of these blue colours into this side of the mountains. We've got a light and a dark side. Even here, you've got the colours that are more turquoisey, and you've also got the colours that are more purple. There we go. Let's have a look. So I'm starting to just put in a few shapes, just make it a little bit interesting. It doesn't matter if your shapes aren't exactly the shapes that are there, but make sure that you get some of those brush strokes in the right direction. It might not be quite as I want it, but I'm just going to get something down. Because sometimes you start and then you, once you start, you'll start to see what's going on. And I've just used brush strokes again, direction of stroke. Yeah. Direction of stroke. And we're going and I'm looking, it's almost got two bands of colour. There's this light colour at the top, which com compared to this is, remember this has got to go white round here. So this colour is a lighter colour. And then we've got this, this more redder colour. It's more like that. Let's have a look. Something like that. I'm going to blend in a minute. So, and we're going right down to here. So this is still quite light. And just blend those edges together a little bit. I'm going to go darker underneath this edge here. It's going to be very, very similar, all of the things that you do. So I'm going to just, again, just moving down with my brush. So I've got the darkness, but I'm going to just bring down a little bit of the colour on top as well. It might not be exactly as the picture is, but that's okay. You definitely want to show as if there's a lip and the way to show that is to put a darker colour in. It's the white. So I'm about to put the white in. No, I don't want that colour. So turquoisey again. Can you see by just leaving a few gaps, that's how we're going to build this up. We're going to look at the shape and build up. When you look at waveforms, you want to be looking again at direction in between you have all the colours and then I think if you just build up that colour you might have to put some darts back in and also they're like little V shapes because it's the light hitting the top of the waves but in a sort of V shape fairly flat to be.
So I want to loosen up a bit. I'm holding my brush over instead of holding it like a pencil. We're getting some really sort of lighter reflections in the water from the ice boot. I'm going to do is have the little bit in. And then we'll go back in in the same way as I did over here. White on top. So I'm going to put the reflection in before we start. And I'm just going round. Now, you might want to only do a bit at a time because I do want to blend. I've just cleaned out my brush so it's, a, it's just, just a clean but damp brush. Pale blue. As in the sky, we're reflecting down. Let's just bring. So when you get to this point, you have to stand back, maybe even spend a little bit of time with it, and just start to assess. So at the end, I definitely have gone in and looked at the purples, but I'm beginning to get reasonably pleased with it. I'm going to do get the bears on and then we'll see what happens. I'm going to mix three colours in little dollops and because this is a stay wet palette it will stay wet. You don't need loads of colour because they're quite small bears. I've got here some smaller brushes. We're working dark to light. I'm also going to be working large to small. Have a look at both of your pictures because you want to be looking at this for colour but don't try to slavishly match this polar bear colour wise. You're wanting to merge those polar bears but make them stand out at the same time. So merge them from a colour point of view so they're all part of that painting but make them stand out with the tone. You want more detail on him than, than on this smaller version but you still want the tonal contrast to be different. You probably can't see it. It's quite subtle, but this is slightly less detailed and slightly less bright. You can spend the time doing this before you even start. And remember that this isn't the top layer of the bear either. Now, the next stage is to think about what patches of darks and, and lights we've got. And I'm going to start with some darks. What I don't want to do is lose the, the drawing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dark patches. Immediately you can see that this dark area I'm trying to put in some of these darks and I'm going to use these darks to go into some of these areas just to define it but there's another reason I'm doing these darks as well and making sure I don't lose the drawing. So I've got just under here is getting dark and here and I'm just going to but it's not as dark there and this is where you go oh that's not quite as dark as the others so I'm just going to get a different dark now it doesn't matter here if you lose the, the the blending blend if you can but it's not going to be the end of the world these toenail toes are quite dark so we're going to put some darks in there and then with the toes, in order to not lose some of that, 
I'm going to have to go with a little bit of the lighter tone in between. And I obviously haven't at this point got any lightest tones at all. When you look here, it's still darker and all along where his paw is at the front is dark. I'm going to, I'm just picking that up all along. And this is lighter, but it's still darker than what we want at the end. Now, the other thing that's important is the brush stroke. I've put the dark color in underneath and then I've started to think about the brush stroke direction as well. And the reason I'm doing that is because you need to look at what direction the fur is, and then you're going to be building up and you're going to be doing the light strokes. At this point, you don't want to be putting in every single bit of fur. What you do want to be doing is going the right direction. And if you don't, it just will look confusing and you'll go, oh, I don't really understand that. So there's a lighter area coming down here. I can see it. So this is a big thing about tone and I'm not really looking at that. I'm looking at this because I'm looking at all the dark areas. So I've, I've done quite a bit of work in this area here. So now it doesn't matter if you, in fact, it's nice to leave some of the blues coming through. That's fine. So now I'm going to go here and look where I've marked on the drawing where there's some dark patches or where there's some real highlighted patches. I'm also adjusting my brush stroke to the direction of the fur. Now, what I'm thinking here, right, th this goes up there as well. Still, there's quite a light patch there. So watch out for things like that because you might not realize, it's obviously the reflection of the snow is hitting the base of his jaw. So instead of there being a shadow there where you'd expect, it's quite a light area. But of course, we're not picking up on the real light areas here that's going to be there. What, what we're doing is we, we're putting in a slightly darker colour than what the finish is going to be. There's a dark bit here that I haven't done on the drawing. Just have a look. If you, if you find that, just if you look where his chin is and then you work your way across, it sort of starts there and then that starts a little bit further down. So you can just work it out by looking at the rest of the painting as to where you should start. So here I'm coming up in this direction. So you can see that just because I'm lining the top of that up with there. So it's exactly the same as re really as what we've done with that feathers painting with the bald eagle, but it's on a much smaller scale. I was tempted to go into a bit of, bit of white there for the, the top of his ear, but I am gonna just do this highlight for now with it's off white the light colour that we've got. It doesn't matter if you don't get the exact shape, just as long as you get the direction right. And obviously there's some bits that are really important. I'm just going to pop that eye in as well, which obviously on, on this occasion is just, just like that. So there's some little parts. So eye, nose. It's so such a small area of the painting. This is where, you know, if you're wanting to try to get precision, I've got here a number one. And let's just fill in the rest of that mouth. So I've gone really quite dark in these areas. Normally it takes us ages to do it. Uh, a mouth and a, a nose. Now you can add in the teeth afterwards. What you might want to do as well is emphasize the pores against there with some of the real dark, you know, the, the color I suggested for the eye and stuff. 
which is stalo blue, red and a little touch of black if you want to. I'm going to start to also build a more of the just general colour. Okay. And this is where I'm starting to... I'm still, maybe without you realising it, looking at the third direction. Right, we don't want to lose the difference between there and there. And because I've put the two colours in at the same time, you can merge it because they're wet. Now the really dark colour will be useful to emphasise some of the differences between the tonal differences between the one leg and the other. And you continue like that really. So you can come back to me and ask questions if you want, because I think I've covered a lot of things, but obviously I'm gonna have to just paint now. I'm taking my time over this as I've taken my time over all of this painting because it's time consuming painting because it is quite a detailed painting or it can be the way that we, we do it. There, there would possibly be other ways. There always is. In fact, what I'm doing here, even though I said that I wasn't going to start on the next layer, because there was a, there's a, some colours coming through underneath, I'm actually starting to separate out some of this hair. It's already starting to come together. The colours are coming through. Still direction, still. And what you're looking for, it's all observation as well. You're looking for the nuances of the, the direction of the fur, but also the nuances of the shapes that are there as well for the tone. So here, there's quite a light patch in this area. In fact, it does go even lighter. So this, where that meets that, it, it's quite light and this is this is right so i'm already starting to do the next layer just because as i'm starting to work i'm starting to think oh this is interesting i think i will add and sort of because we're, we're working quite small I'm, I'm going to be adding different colors as i go i'm working in different areas and dotting about now it's blending as i do it and it's no, better it doesn't matter, like this, this, these bits that I did at the beginning, they won't be blended, but it doesn't matter. See that these dotty bits, which are showing me where there's some darks that I really yeah. don't want to lose. That, that doesn't matter. I've used that as a sort of map and it will be colour that will just come through as you do the next layers. Now, I know this looks incredibly detailed, but this is a little bit how any detailed painting stops an oil painting or acrylic painting when it's done you know dark to light you you go into the painting you block in if you're going to do something really detailed it starts off very undetailed and tonal and then you work and you do layers upon layers upon layers because detail comes from having lots and lots of different color you can do it other ways but you're saving time doing this you do the big blocks if you look at the oil painters some of the oil painters that are using oil and acrylic they'll start off with great blocks of bro landscape painters they'll start off with great blocks of color and then they go into incredible detail but when you first see their paintings you'd think oh gosh a child's done it you know it's blocks of paint yeah blocks of color and yeah that makes sense it's darker so it doesn't actually necessarily make initial sense but if you do that, you do save your time if you save time if you're doing detail and yeah. But sometimes you don't put that time in, and this definitely needs a little bit of time if you're wanting to make it more realistic. So we're going to extend that. That's so it, if, you're, if you're going to be doing the layers and the dark layers underneath, and you put a lighter layer on the top, even if the lighter layer that's going over isn't transparent, it still shows through. Right, the reason it shows through is because you miss bits. Ah, right. 
Does that make sense? I think so. I'll watch what you're doing and see. Okay, love, thanks. Yeah. Now, if I want to be looser, I can be looser by using larger brushes. I'm just looking at the direction of the fur again. And you see, we're getting there there now with that. That is that is a nearly done. Obviously, we need the highlights, but that's probably had one, two layers. Yeah, so the first layer was blocks. The second layer, I've started to put a little bit of texture just by running my, my paint strokes and leaving gaps. And then the third layer, I'll come along and I'll just highlight areas. In fact, I can show you. So here, I'm going to highlight along here just to, so I've got some, it's actually white. So I'm just going to pick up on a few bits, making sure you get in the right direction and highlighting more on one side. And then if, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in after we've actually painted the bear and put highlights with the white and put a low light with the blue, red and black. Now you can leave some of the, of the you can leave some of the blues com coming through as well. That's fine. But as long as you're getting, right, I'm going to go mid-tone here. Mid, mid of the mid-tones. So we're going to go mid of the mid-tones here. I can build it up. Now, I'm going to start blocking in big style because obviously we're running out of time now. So I'm going to just, let's block in around, we've, we've got the detail of what we want because we've got in the darks and the lights that we want to preserve. We're preserving our drawing and now I'm just going to fill in, we're still leaving gaps, I'm going to fill in some of this. Now there's an interesting little bit here which goes across. So I'm going to look at that as well. And I think the easiest way of doing that is to put the lightest tones in. I'm just going to put some light tones and just emphasize that. And then I'm going to go in with darks afterwards. I can't see any reflection on the original painting, the photograph. Ah, that, I think that's because it's been photoshopped. Yes, I was wondering that. Yeah. Yes, the, the way you've done it, Debbie, it makes it look like the paws are actually going into the snow instead of just floating on top. Well, so, I'll try and do that. I will try and put a little bit of something underneath, yeah. Yeah. So if we've got the, the little bit of a shadow along his feet in this picture, even though he hasn't got it in the originals, just to show up the pause on the on Yeah, I think I think that we're gonna do something like that, yeah. 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 And I, I know this is taking a bit longer and but it will take longer. The more detail you put into a painting, the longer it takes. Yes, no. <laughs> but it's like really what is really nice, it, it, it can be really relaxing though. I don't know if you found that already, but I was doing this last night and I got, I just got carried away with it and mm. I'm going to get lighter and lighter now on this I area. That's another nice thing about this particular painting. And also if you look at the tones here, you want to be careful with the tones as you come yeah. up. So if you've got, so there is a bit of a darker tone there and then he's, there's darker tones coming down from his eye. The fur, the closer it is to his face, the smaller oh, the strokes you may want to for his face actually yes. convert to your smaller brush. Not so much for this stage, the blocking in stage, but for the next stage, which is the, you know, the, the stage I've started here, you're starting to build up and build up. Then you want to be careful. Oh, he looks quite nice here with the blue. <laughs> leaving a bit of blue. What I'm trying to say is the smaller fur, it's very close. And if you actually look at a dog or a cat, the, the fur on their face is, is tiny. Generally, when you're talking hair, you don't want to be doing individual hair. 
which is why we're doing these blocks underneath. It's just, it's just getting the idea. I'm just doing this to see if I can uh, just. The blocks aren't huge, let's see. Yeah. So here you do want to be blending. Right, underneath. Mm. So we're blending, picking up, blending. You probably need to use a stay wet palette if you're wanting to mix up your colours like I have. But you can make yourself a stay wet palette. You don't have to buy one. So all you have to do is have a sealed container, sandwich container or something like that. And then you can just put something to hold, hold water underneath. Some of your watercolour paper will do. And then some greaseproof paper on top. Using a gel cloth for the Yeah, anything like that. Anything. I've used a kitchen roll before now. When you do the lighter colours, what you want to do, you want to make sure you, you do some overlapping at the edges so that it's not all a straight, just a straight edge. And you also want to be leaving gaps again. You always leave your gaps. Yeah. If you're finding that you've gone a bit too light somewhere, that's all right. All you do is you go back in and you take some dark back down. Just take your time. Just, just enjoy it. In fact, when you look at the light parts on his body, you don't actually see any brush strokes on there. It's the darker coming into it that makes it look as if... Mm. You've raised a very interesting point there. Yeah, that well, is. The reason that that's very interesting is because when you've got a building in the sun and it's you see the lighter areas of the building, that have been hit by really, really bright sun. Yeah. When it's lighter, you don't see as much detail. No. Yeah? yeah so it? I think, so you're right. The same thing sort of happening here, isn't it? Yeah. We'll take that into account. That's great because it's, it's just observation, isn't it? That's what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't matter if you go wrong on this. I'll just bring it out and remove that. You can start to see, can't you? There's some very interesting changes of colour. There's certain areas that are more turquoise. The reflections underneath are more turquoise. This area becomes more purple. And so I've talked through the different colours as we go further back using closer brush strokes. And there's little Vs on these. But here, the water eddy, it's sort of eddy, it's got like little circles. And of course, you've got that lovely shadow and glow underneath the iceberg here. But everywhere in the icebergs, you can't see this bit. See I love the movement. The way you catch the movement there is amazingly good what, in the water. The, the water, oh, water makes it look... You know, in stark contrast to the iceberg, it's very satisfying. And the, the reason that I've captured the water, and it, it's not, I haven't gone incredibly detailed, but what I've done is I have put lots of different colour and I have done the direction. It's all about direction, you see. It's a lot of observation of the actual picture. Okay, thanks for watching.